H oh, what's up YouTube? HPJ here, and I'm coming at you guys with my card analysis for all the new Yoshinju cards released in Raging Tempest. So, the Yoshinju monsters have actually been around the game for a couple of years now. I want to say four or five. They were introduced in um, one of the special one of the special sets for Yu-Gi-Oh, and I believe it was. Um, I don't have any of the newer cards uh, from those sets. No, I don't, sadly enough. Oh, well. Well, they were released, um, no, in the Special Forces. I think that was the name of the set. And then they were reprinted in several other sets. And then here's Raging Temp, Raging Rampage, giving them new support. Um, three monsters, two spells, one trap. And the crazy thing about this is that, um, despite the fact that this archetype has its pendulum set up, most people did not use the pendulum setup unless it's for, for defense. But now with these new cards, people are trying to incorporate the pendulum aspect of it and use a lot of the high level monsters. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But um, there are a lot of offensive and defensive setups to this archetype. I will be going over each of the cards themselves and then give my opinion of them in setups that they're, I guess, supposed to have or whatever. But I will make sure you guys are informed about these cards nonetheless. So without further ado, let's hit the Yosinju lineup. So first off is our girl, Yosinju Isna. Yosinju Isna is a level 4 wind attribute beast warrior type monster. 800 attack, 1200 defense, and her effect reads, once returned during the end phase, just like most of the other Yosinju cards, uh, if this card was normal summoning this turn, you can turn it to hand. You don't use each effect of Yoshinju Isna once per turn. You can discard this card from your hand this turn. Your opponent cannot activate cards or effects when a Yoshinju monster is normal or social summon. If you control another Yoshinju monster, you can draw one card. Next up is Yoshinju Sabu. Sabu is a level 4 when after you beast warrior type monster, 1700 attack, 400 defense. Once a turn during each end phase, just like Isna, you can, when this card is normal summon, return each card to hand. You can use each of the following effects of Yosin Sabu once per turn. If this card is normal summon, you control another Yosin card. You can add one Yosin pendulum monster from your deck to your hand. You can target one Yosin card you control, place one. Dazzling Wind of Yosin Valley or one Yosin Training Ground from your deck face up in your Spell or Trap card zone. And if you do, shuffle that other target into your deck. Then we have Yosin Ju Heatot. Level 1, 2, 4, 10 <laughs> Wind Attribute Beast Type Pendulum Monster. 2,000 attack, 3,000 defense. So its pendulum effect is you can target one Yosinju card in your pendulum zone. For the rest of the turn, uh, this the pendulum scale of that card becomes 11. Also, you cannot show some monsters set for Yosinju monsters, even if this card leaves the field. During the end phase, return this card to your hand, and if you and you can only use the pendulum effect of my Yosinju Hitot once per turn. This card cannot be a monster effect. You cannot. This card cannot be special summon except for pendulum summon. If this card is normal or special summon, you can target one card your opponent controls and turn that card to hand. For each time a card on the field is returned to the the hand or the main deck by your card effects, while this card is on the field, all Yosinju monsters you control gain 500 attack. You, once a turn, during the end phase of the turn, if this card was such a sum in this turn, you can return it to your hand. Then, we have the spells and traps for, Yosinju, for the Yosinju. We start off with the first spell. Yosin Oshi Channeling. Uh, you not, if you control no monsters, you can activate one of the following effects of this card. Also, for the rest of the turn, after this card effect resolves, you can access some monsters except for Yosinju monsters. Add one level 5 or higher Yosinju monster from your deck to your hand. Place one Yosinju Sinchu L and one Yosinju Sinchu R from your deck into your pendulum zone, but destroy them during the end phase of your opponent's next turn. Then the next card is Yosin Whirlwind. Yosin Wind Warship, sorry. A uh, quick play spell. Its effect, if you control three or more Yosinju monsters with a different name, you can return as many of Yosinju monsters you control to your hand as possible. Then you draw until you have five cards in your hand. You can only activate one Yosinju Wind Warship per turn. 
then the trap card for the Yo Senju, Yo Senju Sword Swing. If you control no monsters, reveal up to two Yo Senju cards in your hand with a different name. Then target the same number of face up cards your opponent controls. Return those cards to hand. You only activate one Yo Senju Sword Swing, Sword Sting once per turn. Uh, per turn. So that is all of the Yosinju cards, so let's get started. I think the big thing to talk about, of course, is the new big monster, my Yosinju Hitot. So Hitot, just like um, Yosinju R, I believe, has the ability to manipulate um, the scales for the Pendulum Zone. Yep, my Yosinju Suchi R. They both share a similar setup where they can change the values of the Pendulum cards in the pendulum zone, uh, making it accessible for a big pendulum summon. Especially considering the fact that these monsters have a two level 10 monsters that can easily be summoned off of their effects. But they do exclude you from so many other cards except for Yosinju. I mean, that's a given thing with a lot of archetypes nowadays is that if they're not the monster, not monsters of that specific archetype, they will um, force you to play those cards. Um, and use those cards for the rest of the turn, which, I mean, that's perfectly fine. But the thing about Yosinju Hitot, it is that it's trying to help you with your pendulum scale. Um, especially because of the fact that Yosinju have a range of monsters going from levels 1 all the way to level 10. So, if you can get that balance, basically, bam, you can set this self up. Um, I think one of the biggest uh, combinations is Yosinju Hitot with my Yosinju Daibok, because Daibok and Hitot have a similar setup to each other. They have an inverse, uh, which is also funny because these two are the biggest monsters. Um, when deep, when Daibok is summoned, he can return cards back to the hand, and then that will trigger Hitot's ability. Uh, that Yeah, it, uh, this card is normal, so summon you target up to two cards on the field, return those to hand, and then once a turn during the end phase, it will return to hand when special because it was such, if it was special summon. So the crazy thing about Daibok and Hitot is that if you combine Daibok with Hitot, the bounce effect, it will give other Yosinju monsters, including itself, the additional 500 attack that you can help those monsters uh, run over stuff and do massive amounts of damage. I mean, you also combine this card with cards like um, Yosinju Kama 1, because Yosinju Kama 1 has the ability to bounce stuff back. Um, of course, the end phase effect of these monsters, if you normal summon um, Heat Hot or Daibok through effects, and I believe neither of them leave the field if they are summoned that way. Yeah, so if they're normal summoned, you can easily put them onto the board. But um, if they're special summoned, they do return to hand. So take advantage of that as you will. You can also take advantage of cards like Divine Wind of the Mist Valley if you want to, because that does allow special summons of monsters to the board, and you can take advantage of that. But because of it being such a high level, like they're really trying to implement the whole pendulum aspect of the Yosinju, which I don't mind, but my issue with them overall is that I don't, personally, I don't like the scale when it comes to the Yosinju. I really just prefer it when it comes to like the whole Beast Warrior beatdown setup. But I do admire the fact that they want to incorporate the pendulum aspect of the Yosinju archetype. Um, especially considering the fact that Yosinju L and R are not bad monsters at all by any means. Um, next up, we gotta talk about the little, the level 4 or lower Yosinju monster. So we're gonna start off with Isna, who is pretty much just an additional draw card, or she can be, um, the defensive wall, uh, that helps protect your monsters from being, uh, negated, having their normal summons. Or so summons negated, which is a good thing for um, Yo Senju because that's actually been a problem with cards like Effect Veiler um, running around. You don't want that to happen. Infinity Impermeance and you know stuff like that can really be beneficial. I mean, can really be a nasty flaw into the Yo Senju. So if you can take advantage of a card that can protect them, go right up for it. I honestly think she's one of the better of the two, and if it just came to you know not having to rely on the Pendulum summons. And the pendulum aspect of it. The only thing is her and Sabu don't have additional normal summons when they're summoned to the field through a normal summon, which sucks. 
But, I mean, I get it. They don't want the whole normal summon spam thing. But it's kind of one of those things. Like, it kind of would have helped. Let's stretch out the deck a little more. Um, actually, let's talk about Sabu now while we are having him around. So, Sabu uh, is one of the stronger of the two for, in attack power. Um, Sabu, for the most part, can search for any pendulum monster when he is normal summoned. Um, but really gets into the flow with his other ability, which is you can target um, a Yosinji card and then put the trap cards on the trap cards or the spell card to the field. Um, Yosinju Dazzling Wind and then Yosinju uh, Yosin Whirlwind and, Yos and Dazzling Winds of Yosin Valley. The crazy thing about these two cards is that unlike Yosin Training Ground, these cards have something that can actually put them into play. Yosin Training Ground still doesn't have anything that puts it into play. You literally have to draw into it or have a way to force a draw into the Yosin card. Because I don't understand why they are not considered Yosin Shu cards, but they're not. And it's weird. Um, considering the fact that they all have to do with the Yosin Shu cards, I feel like Yosin Training Ground is the one that's missing out the most. Although it is pretty much the tanky for the archetype. And it gives a power boost. Each of those effects can only be used once a turn and once that turn. So you got to be careful which one you're going to use and pick and choose which one you're going to use. Dazzling Wind of Yosin Valley and Yosin Whirlwind only really are going to work. Because if you combine these with the um, you know higher level Yosin monsters. Especially considering that these are the two cards that help with returning cards or punishing uh, players who don't return the cards. Either by inflicting damage to them or uh, returning cards in advance. Because um, I, like I said, I really did not look for any of the typical stuff outside of what were, I was using for just to be speed down. Unless I was using Yosin R and L for their effect, which Sabu can search for any pendulum Yosin you card and add it to your hand. So he can add Hitat, he can add Doc. Daibok, he can add um, LNR. If I can find LNR, LNR. There you go. He can also add LNR to your hand. But I honestly just think that Sabu in overall is just something if you're going to use the high level monsters in the pendulum setup, Sabu is the card to go for. Uh, then next up, we can actually go into the spells. And we're going on one of the biggest disappointments is Yosin Oshi Channeling. So, like I said, this card does focus on uh, Pendulum Summon. Mainly, it's summoning. It's trying to get you to get to Yosin R and L. Uh, Yosin Yu Suchi. Sin Chi L. Sin Chu L. And Sin Chu R. These two are great Pendulum cards because they have great defense um, as both monsters and as Pendulum cards. Uh, and putting them into the Pendulum automatically. You are forced to summon, to summon nothing but Yosin Ju cards, but how most of them work anyway, this works out well. Especially because Yosin R, just like um, Hitat, has the level change. I mean, the pendulum scale change. So that can help with getting the range between 3 and 11, or going from 5 to 11, depending on who is in the other pendulum zone. Um, these cards are destroyed during the end phase of your opponent's turn, but that's perfectly fine. If you are using their effects to... Um, abilities already. Uh, these two just happen to be the only rock monsters in a more dominant archetype of beast and beast warriors. But they do get a lot of synergy. Like I said, this is more so of them trying to get people to remember Yosinju is a pendulum based archetype that has a lot of aspects, not just, you know, normal summon beast warrior beatdown. So I don't hate the card, I just feel like the card came late. Uh, like a lot of other pendulum cards, and I feel like what it is trying to implement does help, but it's just like it's a nah type of situation for me when it comes to, um, you know, the whole situation with LNR. So then we move on to Yosin uh, Wind Warship. This is kind of one of the worst hand recovery cards I've ever known. Like, you have to have three or more Yosinju monsters on the field, then you have to return them to your hand, and then you draw until you have five. So, what if your hand's already full of cards? 
Like, unless you pigeonhole something and everything away, the only real thing about this is you're only getting two in exchange for bouncing back three. And then, like, the only way you can really benefit from this is if um, Hitot is already on the field and then you have three other monsters you're going to send back. Like, I, I just, I'm sorry, I don't like this card. It's supposed to be draw power, but it's like, they can run pot of design, they can run pot of, of extravagance, they can run pot of duality, they can run card of demise, they don't, like, the pendulum thing is just very gimmicky when it comes to this archetype. And I feel like it's just, like, this card could have been so much better. Like, what if it said, just return two Yosinju cards, then draw until you had five. That would have been a little better. Um, yeah, it's just, it's a very, just, meh. No, it's not even meh, it's just very bad, and, ugh. Like, the other cards are more acceptable than this. Like, even the Oshi channeling is actually more acceptable than, um, Wind Worship. And then the last card is the trap card, um, Yosin Sting. Yosin Ju Sword Sting. Like, this is actually not too bad of a card. Uh, reveal two Yosinju cards in your hand, then return two cards your opponent controls um, back to their hand. And so it's pretty much a give and take with this type of card, um, which is not bad. I honestly think this is really good, especially if you open up with this. But the thing about this card is the opening ploy. Like, Yosinju don't have a really good opening stance, so this card is supposed to try to help with that, where, okay... You control no monsters, reveal two Yosinju cards in your hand with a different name, and then disrupt your opponent's setup, if you possibly can. Which is not bad, but I think, honestly, it's kind of one of those late situations. Um, I do feel like it's a lackluster... It's not lackluster, it's just meh. It's a mad card, because it does what it's supposed to do, but it is a trap card, and because Yosinju don't really have much of a, a game one plan, it's more so used for that whole re reaction setup. Like, you have to draw into this card if you're going game one, and you have to hope that you have the setup to defend this card. Otherwise, it's just very lackluster, and it's kind of useless. Um, my overall opinion on all of the new Yosinju cards, um, even though it seems like I've been beating around the bush with them, is I think some of these are a lot of hit, some of these are very big misses. Like, if I honestly could tell you, I think Sword Sting, um, Oshi Channeling, and um, Heat Hot and Isna are actually really good hits. I feel Wind Warship in I feel Wind Warship is a disappointment, and I think Sabo Sabu, oh, I almost called him Sabo from One Piece, but Sabu honestly is very situational if you can focus on Pendulum. Like these cards do have great synergy with. You'll send you cards, but it's very particular ones. And if you're not pendulum summoning, most of these are not going to be useful. Um, if you do want to just focus on the Beast Warrior setup, you do have Isna, which you can rely on. You can get some defenses with um, Yosin Sword Swing, Sword Sting. And like if the pendulum aspect, of course, you go from Sabu, Hitot, and Oshi Channeling. Um, like I said, I think Wind Warship is just trash. And it honestly could have been something could have just been better for it, but um, that's pretty much it for my whole uh, card analysis for the Yosinju cards. Uh, let me know what you guys think of the Yosinju cards. What are you filling in aspects on them? Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Please don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell. Then be informed when I do my uploads. Thanks everybody for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time. It's CJ signing out.